Dear friends, today let us see what this word Advaita means. Advaita, Na plus Dvaita becomes Advaita. Na means no, not. Dvaita means dual. Dual means two things. When we say two things, it need not be necessarily two things. It can be many things. When we accept two, you can accept three, four, five and any number of things. So all the multitude of things which we see in this universe, all these things, they are a duality. So, Na plus Dvaita Advaita means there is only one principle in the whole universe. So, that is the doctrine or that is the ultimate conclusion of this uh, philosophy which we see in the Upanishads. Upanishads we know, Upanishad is part of the Veda and the philosophy which is there in that Upanishad is that there is only one principle in the whole universe, there is nothing more than that. So, uh, when we say there is only one principle, we should not mistake it. Uh, uh, or we should not equate it with the statement that there is only one God. When I say there is only one God, I mean that there is a God and I am the worshipper. I am separate from God, I am the worshipper and God is the worshipped. So there is again a duality here. So we should not mistake it for monism. That is that when I say there is only one God, it means monism. Advaita is not monism. Advaita is slightly uh, different from that, which we will see. Then it is not even pantheism, there is what is called pantheism, that is God is present everywhere, God is present in everything. That is a very very simplistic way of uh, saying that God is, uh, some divine force is there in everything. That is again, that is not Advaita. Then it is slightly different from that. Let us see what it is. The man is the only person who is, who in this universe as we see, who makes an enquiry into what exactly is the nature of the universe what exactly is the nature of his own self and what is the, who is the possible creator. So, all these questions, I think man is the only person who uh, say enquires into these things. I don't think any animal <laughs> enquires into this. No philosopher has so far said that all the, any, any animals like dogs or uh, monkeys, they do uh, this sort of speculation. It is, it is accepted by all that man is the only person who does this enquiry. Then what is the, what are the tools? or what is the lab laboratory which a man has. The only laboratory which a man has is his own human body and the outside universe. His own body means he is having the five senses. The sense of smell, the sense of taste, the sense of seeing and things like that. And then the mind, the mind which is there to coordinate all these sensory impressions. So this mind is there and senses are there. And outside world, Corresponding to these five senses, we have got these five elements which we say Prithvi, Apas, Tejo, Vayur, Akashaha and these senses are just corresponding to them. And then, then what is the connection? What is the connection and who created this? So man thinks in a rather cause-effect relationship. Man always try to establish some cause-effect relationship. When I see something, then who is the creator? Then who made this pen? So the simple example given in Vedanta is that of a pot. So, for making a pot, what is the material that is required? Some clay is required. So, clay is the material and there is a person who makes the pot, who is the potter. Then, the clay is called the material cause. Then, the potter is called the instrumental cause or the, he is the efficient cause for that. These two cause-effect relationship we try to establish in everything. So, in the case of a universe, let us say, in the case of the universe, if we accept a creator, if we accept the creator that there is somebody who is say there sitting high above the skies and then that person, so he uh, suddenly he took out some material and he created this universe or took out some, um, some, um, some clod of earth and then he breathed air and then he created a man. So if you say like that, then it means that there is some universe outside there is a God existing separate from that. God may be a very, very highly powerful man, but then God is something which is existing outside and then there is some material which is outside the God. Which again means that both of these people are living in a much larger space. <laughs> both of these people are limited entities. Both these things are limited entities. That there is one thing called God, there is something called universe. These two things are totally different things. So which means these two are limited entities. And we cannot accept that God is something which is a limited entity. However powerful he may be, he will be a limited entity. So which means, 
we have to conclude that God is something, uh, the another alternative is, God has taken out something from his own self and then created this universe. Which means, which, which means that God is somebody who is having some sort of uh, avayavas or parts like us. We have got some various limbs or avayavas in our body. So like us, he is a body, he is some, something, some entity which has so many parts and one part he has taken out and then from out of it he has created this. So God cannot be imagined like that also. So what exactly, then what exactly is the uh, possible thing? So Vedanta says that what all we see is only a manifestation on that thing. We don't even say God. We don't even refer to it in masculine gender. We refer to it in totally neuter gender called Brahman. And that Brahman is nothing but existence and consciousness. There is something which is existing. And that consciousness is something which is existing and that is what is pervading the whole universe. Then what is it that we are, we feel that I feel that I am seeing something outside and then that some there is a, what is called a seer and what is called a scene. Whatever I see is something called drushya and I am supposed to be the seer and then I, um, who am I? When I want to look at myself, the mind itself is something which is seen. Mind is not the seer, mind itself is seen, it is being illumined by something else, that universal consciousness. So, in that manner, who is the seer and who is the seen? If we go into this type of discussion, then we come to the conclusion that this world is only a manifestation, it is an appearance on this Chaitanya. And Advaita says that it is only this Sat and Chit, this, the, the Sat and Chit are not two different things, Sat Chit is one only, <laughs> this existing consciousness. This is the only principle which is in the universe and all other things are just manifestations, they are just appearances on this. And that is what we call this Maya. And then this Maya, it is very difficult to say whether it is existing or non-existing, whether it is Sat or Asat. So that is why we say Sat, Asat, Vyam, Anirvachaniyam. Maya is something and similarly this universe, similarly the human being is something which cannot be uh, finally said whether it is existing or non-existing. But the only thing which is existing is that consciousness. So that is the Advaita principle. So that is what is the uh, brief picture of this Advaita doctrine. Thank you.